Hey guys, what's going on? Back again with another Zombies video. As you can see by the thumbnail, uh, the title, and what's on the screen, it's going to be a follow-up to the uh, Jason Blundell Black Ops 3 Impossible Easter Egg video, uh, saw video that I made uh, this past year on Easter. Being that it was Easter and Impossible Easter Egg and, you know, it's kind of the stuff that we do in video games. Uh, I wanted to eventually at one point make a follow-up or a sequel to that or maybe a better explanation. Uh, just never got around to it, so I figured today's uh, 115 day, uh, 2022 technically. <coughs> and Vanguard just came out uh, a couple months ago, so I wanted to kind of talk about a couple different things. Uh, maybe even talk about that original uh, Impossible Easter Egg video that I made. Uh, of course, it got a lot of hate, and that was my intention, uh, was for it to get a lot of hate because... Uh, like I said, the unfortunate truth, a lot of big channels have simps that'll believe anything that those big channels tell them. Anything anybody else says, you know, nobody believes them. It's all made up, you know, um, because it's it's funny, too, because that's what's put into the zombies, video games, and, and movies all together, is that people are always going to be under a control of somebody else. You know, they, they're kind of like um, almost in a trans or a zombie-like state, and they just only kind of believe or, or see the world one way and don't want to change and stuff like that so uh this is going to explain the solve a little bit better again my intention of the first video was to kind of just say hey uh you know a lot of these big channels um you know they they get all the credit for everything um but they put no work into it and i i'm still sticking to that i'm still sticking to my guns because as you can tell what's going on in vanguard all the big channels have just been putting out hate videos. They put no effort into solving anything, no one effort into looking into anything. And kind of what I mentioned, maybe even in the first video, is a lot of them, um, you're basically just handing money over to those big channels. And I think that's kind of what those big channels, big channels are looking for in Vanguard. I think they want Treyarch or Call of Duty or Activision just to hand over a bunch of money to them. Uh, and then they'll promote the game without you know earning it or putting any effort into it so i that was one thing that i stopped after black ops 2 i started noticing like i was the only one that was like up at like two in the morning three in the morning making these videos solving these easter eggs coming up with some type of explanation for it and they would just put a negative spin on it and then put a video up and make a ton of money on it you know uh, without any effort, without even them, you know, trying to come up with some type of idea. If I had seen that maybe they were, um, you know, putting some effort into it or maybe came, coming up with some theories on their own and stuff like that, then I would be okay with it. But I was really upset when I made the video and of, of course it showed in the video and then uh, a lot of people were upset because it kind of, um, you know, you know, it kind of opened their eyes and took the blindfold off for them that like hey don't believe or the world isn't how you believe it to be and that story and narrative goes on in a ton of video games and a ton of movies uh, maybe even like the matrix and, and stuff like that but i'm not going to get too much into that uh so again i'm going to go over to the go over more in detail to solve and explain it and it kind of in a way what i just noticed while i was getting ready to press record or, or, or do this is that it actually looks like it's a reverse um storyboard the way i had done it and it wasn't my intention it's funny enough that like looking at it now maybe subconsciously i kind of made it into a whole little storyboard but that's how games and movies and um even books and comics um are made as people what they call a storyboard they put a bunch of ideas and uh illustrations together to tell the story um visually and then they to kind of have people see what's going to go on throughout the story. And that's kind of what, um, incidentally, I did with the Impossible Easter Egg video. And, and for this one is that, like, you can kind of see the layout, how everything kind of connected and mashed up with, um, of course, you can see, and it's no big secret, is it was everything was based on, like, Cats the Musical. The first little piece of the Easter Egg was from... Um, you know, obviously, Mob of the Dead it was Jason Blundell's first um, real zombies map that he made. So that was where he kind of started and or lit, it lit the fuse. And then he was going to write this uh, big story, kind of have it parallel Cats the Musical, um, as you can see. And it's kind of all over the place. Uh, it's not flowing as much as I want to. But 
Nero uh, obviously was based on Mr. Mistopheles, which is the character, the main cat in um, in uh, in Cats the Musical. However, there is Mr. Mistopheles isn't like a bad guy. He doesn't really cut any deals. So unless there's some really deep storyline stuff that I haven't caught on to in Cats, because it's again one of my favorite um, musicals. Uh, incidentally and ironically, and the, the other thing that I want to talk about, how funny uh, life imitates imitates art and how art imitates life, is that um, <laughs> people didn't like Blood of the Dead, which was like a remake. In the new Cats 2000, maybe 20 version or 2019 version, people really didn't like it. Um, it was it's probably going down in history as the one of the most hated movie of all time is Cats, the, uh, the remake. How ironic in a way that, like, how, uh, it played out, like, art imitating life and life imitating art and stuff like that, that, um, you know, Jason Blundell tried remaking Mob of the Dead and, uh, whoever the studio was that tried to remake Cats the Musical. That I thought was just, like, really crazy coincidence, um, but aside from that, you would have to go back and watch the 1980s version of Cats, how everything, as you can see, parallels each other. Um, Mr. Mistopheles, and we use the story of Faust and zombies that was started in Kino de Toten, ironically, or not ironically, maybe that was kind of the intention. They're like, hey, you know, we have Faust from Kino, uh, and, you know, why not use, like, a movie... Because I think technically Cats is a movie. It's just done on stage because you can buy the DVD. They made it like into a movie version. Um, and it was done on stage and stuff like that. But everything mimics each other nicely. You can kind of see how it's the same story about how cats, cats have cycles. And maybe each time they die, each life they come back. And they... Um, they get reborn into a new cat and a new life, kind of like the old uh, Ultimus got uh, reborn by Monty into the younger um, Primus version. So it was like Ultimus got old uh, and then got reborn into the Primus. Or I think the, the odd thing, though, is that um, Primus got reborn again, if you follow the story correctly. Because at the end of um, Revelations, we have Primus talking to Monty and then they were like hey what are we gonna do what are you gonna do with us now and then they get reborn back again to origin so uh, that's the only little I don't want to say error but interesting thing is that like it would have worked perfectly or maybe they should have shown Ultimus at the end of Revelations um, or I think the idea is too and it goes into like trying to figure out what Jason Blundell or all these deep meanings and zombies is did Primus steal, I know they didn't really kill them, did Primus steal Ultimus's turn to get reborn and they wanted to get reborn again a second time? It's kind of like, let's say you win Employee of the Month and you're supposed to win it again, but then somebody kills you uh, and then takes over your personality and then they win Employee of the Month or something like that. I'm going to put it loosely that way. Um... That's the only thing that maybe one of those like unsolved or even more unsolved stuff uh, or deep, 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 deep meaning that Treyarch and Craig Houston and Jason Lundell and Call of Duty puts in the games is like, well, are we assuming now that um, in Black Ops 3, Ultimus was supposed to be there and get reborn because... I just don't understand, the only thing I don't understand, this is kind of going off topic anyways, but this is how you figure stuff out anyways, is, um, Primus wasn't, isn't supposed to be reborn into a younger, same version. The whole story is, when you get old, and maybe you didn't, your life didn't turn out the way it was supposed to turn out, you wanted, like, a second chance to come back younger, uh, or have a better life, or you compete for a better life, because uh, that's kind of what Cats is about, is you're competing against other cats to come back uh, a younger um, version and, and stuff like that. But, uh, again, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, um, like I said, 
you would have to watch Cats the Musical, and that's the thing with zombie YouTubers and the big channels. You tell them, hey, go watch Cats the Musical, it's everything that Primus and Ultimus is about, they're still not going to watch it. They want you to tell them every single detail, and then they cash in on it, and then, you know, make a video. They won't, don't want to do any legwork. Uh, and again, I know it still might get a lot of hate for saying it because people are still... Uh, I understand, too, like I mentioned before, people look for the biggest channel and want to kind of feed off of them. People have deliberately straight up told me that. They're like, hey, I work with so-and-so, and I give them, you know, when I think I solve something, I only talk to them. Um, you know, and that's understandable. It's not a right way to do things in life. Um, I, but... I mean, I'm not going to name names, and it's people that, like, you would never even expect it to say stuff like that. Like, hey, I only um, talk to this big channel, um, you know, I got featured by them three times in their videos. I'm like, yeah, that's so corny. Like, you're better off just doing yourself, solving it for yourself. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to benefit everyone better than just force-feeding answers. Like, uh, yeah, everybody does that. Everybody starts out that way. Um I'm not going to deny that, but then it's either you're smart enough to realize it and see it, or you're dumb enough to not realize it and see it, and just like, hey, I'm just going to put it up there, whoever sees it. If you're salty that, you know, I'm not saying stuff the way that you want me to say it, it's unfortunate, um, but that's just the way it is in reality that um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's kind of like a lot of different things, like, <clears throat> the pre person that you perceive as the smartest person, uh, and Jason Blundell had said the same thing too, is that he isn't as great as you think he is. He's great because he has people um, working for him, uh, or worked for him, and he gives them all the credit. Uh, he doesn't try and steal all the credit and say that like, he is the best zombie director of all time. But that's what zombies YouTubers, and I tell people that's kind of maybe what the conflict is that we're going through right now is zombie youtubers want all the credit they want to be the reason that the game succeeds um they want to tell their subscribers and fans that they're the ones that made zombies the way it is they don't want to give any credit to the the devs the studios call of duty for some strange reason <laughs> they want to dictate what goes on in the zombie story in the games and stuff like that without um like, the world doesn't work that way, you know, it's, it's the unfortunate truth. Uh, I guess J Jason Bledel said the right thing, is that, like, hey, I'm giving all the credit to the devs and the other people, and he's always going to take, he's also going to take the blame. You know, it works both ways, um, and, and stuff like that. So, um, again, you would have to really, and I know there's going to be trolls out there, like, well, I watched Cats the Musical last night, I watched it last week, and it has nothing to do with Primus and Ultimus and the story at all. And those comments are just going to get blocked or deleted. So, uh, it's the same thing that happens on Twitter. Is you're like, hey, this is a solve. Um, this is based on this. This is, you know, the backstory. And they're going to be like, well, I didn't watch that. Well, I watched it five times, and I don't see that it has anything to do with that. And it's like, okay, well, your message is going to be deleted because you're obviously trolling um and that's the other thing too with some of the zombie youtubers is once you solve stuff and this is the other side to the other secret that you guys probably don't know is uh once you solve stuff and you're the one solving stuff and it gets confirmed by certain people then you go and tell zombie youtubers and they're like well i don't see that you know that's not true that's 100% fake, you're just kind of, um, you're looking for something you out of nothing, you know. Uh, and that's the unfortunate truth, is um, they want all the credit. They want every clickbait of theirs to be true. They want people to think that all their clickbaits are true. They want people to believe all their fake inside information to be true and stuff like that. Because um, right now, like I'm telling you, everything was based off of cats. All the hints and clues are there. You got to go watch the movie and then... Trolls are and simps are still going to say, well, I watched Cats five times, I watched it eight times, and there's definitely no connection between the two, there's absolutely nothing, um, you know, Call of Duty never used Mephistopheles, there's no Faust ever in Call of Duty, 
and um, you know everything. The only thing that I did want to kind of mention is, which I think is the coolest out of everything, like the way that Treyarch makes the games is is amazing. Is if you look in the top right hand corner, I don't want to touch the mouse and mess anything up, but ironically the mouse, cat's mouse, you know, nice pun. Um, so the cat cover box art, let's call it. How the eyes and the end of Origins with Samantha just staring into the screen zoomed in, zoomed in on her eyes, and she's like reading or or looking at um. I, I guess people say it was maybe symbolic of Tank Dempsey. How the the cover box art for Cats and the end of Origins Samantha's eyes was like one of the biggest hints. How far in advance they do plan this stuff out and again i want to kind of talk about vanguard real quickly is like again the same and it's all about cycles i understand that but like how um i'm telling people that and i'm not giving the answer but i'm telling people that you go and you look at vanguard and the story and you kind of piece what's going on you can kind of see where it's going if you find out um what everything is based on and stuff like that. You know what's funny too? The last thing we're talking about, I wanted to tweet at Treyarch and I never did how the narrow poster says an award um, for a million dollars to the man who can unravel the mystery of his greatest illusion. I, I wanted to tweet to them like, Wait, where's my million dollars? Um, you know, because I'm the one that figured it out. Um, but everything is identical. Again, it's Gorad Krovi. You see Rick Toffing sending the souls up to the sky. That's the same exact scene as in Cats the Musical, um, where the Monty version of the cat is sending the souls up to, you know, get reborn and stuff like that. Um, or the house is mimicking whatever um, the, the location that they're being set. In our story, it's Agartha. In their story, uh, it's called, um, oh, I want to say Never, Never, Never World, but it's not, um, Heavy Side Layer, which is not going to have anything to do with anything. It's just a made-up place and story, um, uh, maybe symbolic of heaven and stuff like that, and you get reborn. <coughs> maybe that's something, too, that, like, people want to get sent to heaven because you get reborn when you get sent, sent to heaven. When you get sent to hell, uh, you don't get reborn, you stay in hell and you die and you're a little bit miserable, existence and hell i'm assuming um but when you get sent to heaven you get a second chance to reborn uh, maybe that's just something that you know the author of the book uh decided to make his own because i don't think religion really talks about getting reborn once you go to heaven maybe you do or purgatory or the afterlife maybe that's it uh but it's just crazy how awesome like the reason I do this too is just to kind of again give credit to the devs and Treyarch and Jason Blundell and Craig Houston at the time is like how brilliant like they are the most brilliant people that write the way they write story and piece stuff together yeah I agree with some people that I wish they had more time to go into more detail but as far as like Vanguard is concerned again I'm not going to give any answers but like everything in Vanguard is thought up uh, months ago I wouldn't necessarily say years ago um, maybe months ago, maybe years ago, because it might be actually tie into Chaos Story and Greek mythology and stuff like that. So, it might be like, hey, let's give it another crack at the Chaos Story. Let's give it a, a little bit of a twist, update the the story of the Chaos Story and the, not necessarily Chaos Crew, because, I don't know, voice actors and stuff like that might be a thing of the past. Um, but how, um, you know, it's kind of, uh cool to see how everything is kind of made or how it's thought up like i said it's almost basically like a storyboard when you piece stuff when you look at all the clues and you paste it on a uh something like this a collage you can kind of make it see how it looks like a um a storyboard but i'm gonna leave it at that because it's gonna drag on uh if you want me to talk more about this go into more details but this pretty much explains it like i said it was a little bit better than the way I did it the first time where I just kind of, hey, you either see it or you don't was my saying. Uh, so this explains it a little bit better and how it relates to what we're going through with Vanguard right now is you don't have to wait, you know, let's say 
three years, six years to get answers. You go into Vanguard, you start looking at the story, you like, hey, where does this look like? Why does this sound so familiar? Then you'll start piecing stuff together, you'll try and figure out where it's going, and you'll be a step of ever ahead of everyone. Um, but I know people won't do that. It's like when your teachers and professors say, make sure you study for your test over the weekend, we're having a test on Monday. Nobody's going to study for the test. They're going to study Monday morning at 3 a.m. They're going to wake up before class, go sit in the classroom and try and cram. Um, that's the unfortunate truth. Nobody's going to say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm just going to sit and study uh, for the exam. It's the same exact unfortunate truth. I'm like, hey, go check out Vanguard. Look at the story. Does it sound familiar like anything? What does it sound familiar like? Uh, and then be ready for when the next season comes and stuff like that. People aren't going to do that. Uh, it's the unfortunate truth. They're just going to complain about it, complain about it when the new season comes up. Uh, then complain about that again and, and stuff like that. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. I'll see you guys later.